Hey, can you find a water bottle for me? Something so simple. Hi, I'm Max Brantley from the Arkansas Times on Friday, August the 18th. Let's call this the second battle of Bull Run. I said yesterday that a new war had broken out over the Civil War, specifically over Confederate statue and whether they should stay in public places. Well, yesterday afternoon late, the Arkansas Democratic Party issued a brief statement that said in no uncertain terms that all Confederate monuments should be removed from public grounds and placed on private property or placed in historical context, but not sit on places like the Capitol Lawn where they, where they now sit. I don't think this is a political winner. As I've said, I understand the sentiment. These monuments, no matter what some people say, represent slavery. We've written on the Arkansas blog today quite a bit about the abundant evidence in the historical record that, that the entry of Arkansas into the Civil War was to protect slavery, even though current Republicans Republican legislators say it was not about that at all. Funny, Republicans were uh, opposing secession back in Civil War times. Now they're venerating the, the Confederacy. More history down in Hot Springs, a good article on ArkansasBlog.com today about the Confederate Memorial in Hot Springs, which has stood there for some, I guess, 80 years, thanks to the United Daughters of Confederacy and a prominent square where Central and Washita Avenues meet. There's going to be a rally in Hot Springs Saturday by Confederate venerators and it's supposedly about preservation of Confederate monuments. This group has met before. They say they're not neo-Nazis or white supremacists, just Civil War heritage types. They do plan to come armed, which has some people unsettled. We hope it will stay peaceful. One interesting thing did happen today and that is that the United Daughters of the Confederacy yesterday agreed with an online petition campaign and I think some urging from city officials to remove the Confederate battle flags that had flown over their monument there at the square. Though that flag, of course, has come to have a lot of symbols, most of them very unpleasant in present days. Somewhat related, I think, to the Civil War battle is the fact that there was another uh, shakeup of the White House staff today. Steve Bannon is leaving, the white nationalist right winger who's thought possibly behind a lot of some of the worst things Donald Trump has had to say on, on issues of, of race and nationalism and that sort of thing. The problem is, of course, is that uh, Donald Trump remains there uh, and, and, and also some pretty significant right-wing uh, racially unpleasant types, Stephen Miller and, that, and Sebastian Gorka to name too. Well, one other, one other notable point on this, I think, is the response to Donald Trump's statements following the Charlottesville rally and, and not sufficiently uh, putting down the, the bad impulses that were on display there. The mother of Heather Heyer, the woman that was run down by apparently a, one of the sympathizers to the, the, the white supremacist marches, uh, went on an interview with ABC and said that after what Trump had said Tuesday, she wasn't much inclined to talk to the president, but she offered one real good piece of advice for the president and really the rest of the world too, and that's think before you speak, if only we all could follow that. Late yesterday, the Attorney General's office said that uh, the appeals of Jack Green, a 26-year death row inmate, had been exhausted. They asked the governor to set an execution date. He said he will shortly. Apparently, the state has found some behind the scenes method to again obtain the drugs it needs to kill people. The uh, Arkansas <coughs> Coalition to Abolish the Death Penalty has asked Governor Hutchinson not to set an execution date for Jack Green. There's a lot of evidence his uh, lawyer says that he's mentally ill, unstable, and, and you shouldn't execute somebody in his condition. The coalition says, of course, people who favor capital punishment are not really concerned about his condition. They say that you should be concerned about those people he killed. The University of Arkansas has a new psychology sciences professor, Patrick Forcher. He's written an article with a colleague based on a survey with hundreds of members of the so-called alt-right, this white nationalist conservative movement, and became very surprised. He wasn't too surprised that they tend to put white people at the top of their pecking order and black people somewhere lower down. What really surprised him was he found how much they were willing to talk about thoughts and beliefs that perhaps are not considered polite in some polite circles. They're, they're more empowered, it seems, to talk. I'd like to see a study like this on whether Donald Trump's uh, ascendancy has enabled people like to be more outspoken, to be more politically incorrect, if that's the phrase, as Donald Trump likes to do it. We learned this morning that Arkansas is among 15 states that's seeking to lure a combination Toyota Mazda auto plant, $1.6 billion investment that might employ 4,000 people. 
I'm concerned, and a lot of states are concerned about how much money, taxpayers' money, states are willing to give away to get one of these plants. It's a long payback when you give $3 billion, like Wisconsin did, to get a TV screen plant. Mississippi paid almost $400 million seven years ago to get a Toyota plant. I expect that price will go up significantly. Arkansas's unemployment rate in July held steady at 3.4 percent. That's right at a record low for going on four months now. The economic outlook in the state looks pretty good. Uh, on that note, let's hope for peace over the weekend and the demonstrations down in Hot Springs. Keep resisting, but keep it lawful. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back Monday.